Married couples who sleep in separate rooms. Why do you do this? My parents do this. My mom likes to sleep with the TV on. My dad snores and steals sheets. My mother claims sleeping separately saved their marriage. I know an older couple that have separate rooms. From what I can tell, they're very much in love and very clearly and openly affectionate with each other. Apparently her snoring is next level. Like, their dog starts barking if he's nearby. Girlfriend's parents do this. They both snore and do it to get away from each other's snoring. I didn't think it was that bad until they talked about having to sleep in the same bed during their trip in Europe. They were at each other's throats because if one fell asleep, the other couldn't. My grandparents do this. My grandfather built a small apartment on the second floor of their house. They do it because they have different sleep schedules and in general they spend much of the day apart because they like it that way. But they always eat lunch and dinner together. And my grandfather loves to listen to her soft footsteps throughout the day. He calls her the woman next door. It's really cute. Edit. A word. During the summer I move to another room we call the wind tunnel. Basically I have a ceiling fan going almost 24-7 and a window fan above the bed I run from 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. She has allergies and easily gets runny nose and sneezes from any moving air. My body temp will skyrocket and all sweat like crazy in a room devoid of moving air. So she sleeps in a stuffy no air movement master bedroom and I sleep soundly in the wind tunnel. During the winter I move back, cause then I become the ultimate body warmer for her. My parents slept in separate beds as did my great-grandparents. For my great-grandparents it was a comfort thing. Grandma didn't like not being able to move around the bed at will. She and grandpa loved each other dearly and she passed not long after he did because she missed him so much. For my parents it was a couple things. As my dad aged his sleep cycle went weird. He would be able to sleep a couple hours and then be up half the night and fall asleep again about the time my mom was getting up for work. Also my mom has sleep apnea and uses a CPAP. It made hella noise back then. Dad was half deaf and the sound still bothered him. Out of respect for each other they decided it was better to have separate bedrooms. Sometimes I have to sleep on the couch cause I get hypersensitive to sound. Especially human sound. And don't like the noise his whole existence makes. He gets it luckily. If I even try to sleep on the couch in another room I will wake up to her on top of me. LOL. I do this. I am an absolute terrible person to share a bed with. I snore like a passing semi-truck and apparently. I'm told. Flail wildly in my sleep. When we first got married I kept waking up to an empty bed. She would join me for an hour until I was asleep. Then retreat to the couch. After a week or two I got fed up and just went to the couch first. Then started several months of us trading off for the couch. Eventually I just went and bought a twin mattress and tossed it in the office. That became my bed. And when we got a bigger house. I just set up in a separate room. Different sleep cycles and work schedules. He wakes up 3 hours before me. We blended two households. His bedroom was fully furnished and the furniture and closet were full. It made sense for my stuff to go in a different bedroom. We started out sleeping in one room or the other but I realized pretty quickly that, if I ever wanted to get a full night's sleep, it wasn't going to be in the same bed with him. I've been known to call him a sweating. Snoring, slant sleeping son of a breach after a night of his sweating, snoring, and slant sleeping. We do a, your place or mine, thing for non-sleeping activities but gtfo when it's sleepy time. My wife has MS, one of the primary issues she has is vertigo. When I'm in the bed with her, the motion of my breathing, heartbeat movement really frocks with her vertigo while she sleeps. Also, I snore, so an isolated coil mattress wouldn't quite do it. They aren't total isolation, either. You feel movement, or two beds in one room. Also, honestly, it spices up the sixth life, adds an element of pursuit and some illicit atmosphere to it. We're sneaking around the house to each other's beds to bang. Sleep cycles and she violently tosses around. I've been asked by my commander if I got into a fight when I showed up to duty with a black eye. Spouse snores. Two 60-pound dogs, and a queen-size bed. No room for me and I need dead silence. My grandma and granddad do. She likes it freezing and he likes it boiling. Not separate rooms, but a king bed and separate blankets. We sleep way better. I am a notorious blanket hog and he's always hot when he sleeps. Then we can be close when we want to and separate when we need a good sleep. My stepmother's parents took this to a new level. He built a second house next door. They lived next to each other for 20 years before they both passed in a short amount of time. It seemed very odd to me. But it worked for them, at least from an outside perspective. I know images never reflect reality. He snores. I have an aunt and uncle who do this, they're just hyper-independent. 
mostly fueled by her, so they eat dinner together but do pretty much everything else separately. The funny part is if I send out invites to something like a family reunion or dinner reservations during somewhere when we're already gathered, he'll say, I'm coming, but you'll need to check with your aunt for her answer, it's certainly not how my relationship works, but they've been married for like 50 years so I guess I don't have any reason to criticize their methods. Okay, look, I didn't mean to punch him in the face, or kick him in the stomach, he just kept encroaching on my 7 eighths of the bed. To stay married, I would say seriously but I am serious. Other reasons. 1. She's an only child. Never had to share. 2. I had a large family. Don't want to share anymore. 3. She likes a soft mattress. And I like a firm one. 4. We both snore. But at different points in the night. 5. Night farts. Not going to assign blame. There's plenty enough to go around. 6. Her cats don't like to share a bed with my dog. I could go on. But these are the highlights. I can't sleep very well. Sometimes I don't at all. And when I do, I toss and tumble. It's easier on everyone if I just sleep on my own schedule and in my own bed. Sleeping in separate rooms isn't a sign of a broken relationship. My wife snores like a Peterbilt using exhaust braking on a steep descent. She wants to sleep in the same room as our newborn baby to be close to him, take better care of him at night. I want to get enough sleep to function at my job. Sometimes my GF and I sleep in different rooms, and the reasons often differ. Did I eat a big bean burrito earlier? Separate rooms. Just an example. Also, unless your bed is massive, sleeping with someone next to you can make it more difficult to sleep. Yes, sleeping together is romantic, but getting good sleep is more romantic. Not different rooms, but I sleep on the floor. We bought a Casper mattress, and I slept on it with him for almost a year. Waking up every day in a little bit more pain than the day before, I slept on the floor, by choice. Until I was around 16, I woke up one morning about 6 months ago with my back hurting so bad that ibuprofen couldn't touch. So I slept on the floor that night, and have been every night since. The mattress is too soft. My fiancé and my black lab sleep well enough on it, and I don't wake up feeling like sit. It works for us. My partner and I have completely separate bedrooms. We sleep over. Occasionally in each other's rooms. However, we both find we sleep exponentially better apart. He's a night owl and I'm an early bird. He needs total darkness. I want to wake up with the sun. He wants one sheet and one sheet only on him. I want 10 pounds of blankets. In addition, having a separate room allows me to decorate it however I want, have my own personal space, and keep it to the level of cleanliness I prefer. It makes me feel independent. People look at us sideways when I mention the separate rooms thing, but it's been a game changer. Different sleep cycles due to different work schedules. We are still madly in love and we both agreed to this. Because it's the best for both of us. I'm a very kinetic sleeper. She's a very light sleeper. Can I make it any more obvious? Friends of mine do this. She doesn't like him and feels he's a terrible husband and father. He won't divorce her because it'll cost him his standing in the church. Which is the only level of social prestige he has. He's verbally abusive and initially she did it as a wake-up call to encourage him to nicen up. It's going on its fourth year. I snore. She snores. She also puts her arms across my face which wakes me up and makes me irritated. Snore. I do. My parents do this every so often because my dad snores but usually my mom manages by just falling asleep first. Early in our relationship 90% of our fights occurred in the bedroom and it wasn't about 60 time. I like to sleep in a cold room with the fan on and white noise like a box fan. I also like to go to sleep with a TV on. She likes to sleep in a warm, still cave in complete silence and darkness. We started sleeping in separate rooms and all of the sudden we stopped 90% of our fights. Also, because we were getting real sleep out other fights turned more into heated discussions. Also, it hasn't really affected our sex life. C-O-M-F-O-R-T. Snuggles are nice but man do I love having a big fat king sized gel mattress to my damn self. We've never really shared a bed because he was on midnights forever and when he moved to day shift I just hated having him in bed at night. Plus when he creeps in for booty. It's like we're teenagers again sneaking around. I snore. Loudly. I miss him terribly but it is important for us to both get a good night's sleep. My buddy is basically married and they have this arrangement. Basically they say they aren't one person just because they're dating. They don't want to be the couple who merges into one entity. They are two separate adults and adults have their own rooms. They're two of the most capable and competent people I've ever met in my life. They have their sit figured out. 
They are the reason I no longer view two separate rooms as a sign of a dysfunctional relationship. If anything they make me think most relationships would benefit from there. Let's not do literally everything together. Mentality. Three reasons. 1. I am prone to severe and prolonged bouts of insomnia. Separate beds allows my wife to get a full night's sleep without me disturbing her. 2. I have a really frocked up hip that leaves me sleeping at weird angles, positions, with different beds. I can get comfy without crowding her. I'm a tall guy. So even a king-sized bed would be a challenge for us to both get comfortable in. 3. She can't sleep without a fan on. I can't sleep with a fan on. ITT people with undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea. I'm 6'5", and sleep spread out on my back and she has restless leg that throws knees to my body. Muay Thai 24-7. We grabbed a California king bed and it still wasn't enough. Because a good night's sleep is more romantic than sharing a bed. I snore, and toss and turn. He gives off literal villages levels of heat in his sleep and I can't stand heat. I read, he can't stand light. We keep different hours to an extent. A million reasons. We get along so much better this way. It's not anything like you can't stand your person. I snore and she grinds her teeth. And our awesome Boston Terrier that sleeps with my wife farts and snores. We love each other. We married. We've decided to be in each other's lives until one or the other dies. We are secure enough in our marriage to be able to not sleep in the same bed without thinking it's weird or taboo. Plus if she or I want to get any sleep in order to function at work. Then we have two. Plus on the weekends when sleep is not a must. We do. Major reason he snores. I'm a very light sleeper. Then factor in he sets his alarm to go off way too early. Then hits snooze for about an hour. I wake up before my alarm even goes off. If we didn't go to work it wouldn't bother me. It started out with normal. Oh I'll sleep in the guest room tonight. Because of the snoring and the bed was too small. Turns out I still love having my own room. I like having my vanity. My own bookshelves. And all my clothes not competing for room. It sounds selfish. But he doesn't have to worry about tossing and turning and snoring either. Which always made him feel bad. Having our own rooms is like having personal sanctuaries where we can go. There's never any awkward fights over who should leave a shared bedroom during a fight. I don't think it's better or worse than sharing a bedroom, it's just different and works for us. My parents and grandparents do this. My parents because of a variety of reasons including marital strain and my dad's PTSD from the military messing with his sleep something fierce, my grandparents because of marital strain, weird and non-complementary work schedules and my grandma's quickly reaching the point where it's hard for her to walk up the stairs to the master bedroom anyway. My last boss and his wife do this. They're very happily married. He just has severe leg issues that have him tossing and turning in bed a ton in an attempt to get less uncomfortable. And they quickly realized that if either of them wanted any degree of quality sleep they'd need to have separate beds. I sleep on a race car bed because my son gets my spot. We sleep in the same room. I sleep on a single person futon under our bay window and he sleeps in the bed. I move around a lot when I am going to sleep and I am always worried that my movement will wake him up or keep him awake so I can't relax enough to sleep. Also, I use the entire comforter when I sleep. Before I got the futon I tried sleeping in another room and I hated it. 1. He gets night terrors in the bed but not on the couch. 2. He prefers to sleep in a lit room and generally plays video games time 2 or 3. I prefer a dark quiet room. 3. He runs super hot. I like to sleep bundled up. 4. He snores really bad. He started sleeping in the living room and it's much more restful for us both. He'll sleep in the bed every once in a while but there's a 50-50 shot he'll wake up in the morning in a terrible head space. I miss him in bed but all the animals sleep with me when he's not there. Plus I don't have to be worried about him flailing in his sleep and elbowing or punching me on accident. We are working on 1 and 4. But honestly when we have a bigger place we will probably just have separate beds. We both fight ninjas in our sleep and she likes to sleep on a feathery cloud. Whereas I prefer a rock. She sleeps in complete silence and I need the TV going. Sleeping in the same bed actually makes us grouchy and we fight way more. Our relationship is way better when we aren't chewing nails from sleep deprivation. I'm not married but I definitely want this arrangement. Think about how awesome it would be to have sleepovers in each other's rooms? She's disabled and incontinent. I have sleep apnea. We both have RLS. My parents moved into separate rooms when I was in high school supposedly because of my dad's work schedule but really it was because they weren't happy with each other and wanted to separate. They waited until I was 18 to finally make it official and get divorced. Because they wanted to stay together. For me, 
Funny thing is that my dad still lived with us for two years after that and it sorta worked. A lot of my friends when I was in college assumed that my parents were still together because of this even though they has officially split years before. I work nights and literally get home when she wakes up. We have three kids. I actually have to lock myself in the master closet with a bed and earplugs and dark curtain to be able to sleep. It's not permanent but it's all we got. I've been married for 22 years. Got married young and in the military. We actually went the distance. Marriage is about sharing your life and happiness with someone else. And feeling like you can rely on them long term. It's not about being up their ass 24 7 and feeling uncared about when the other one has their own sit going on. And in that vein, it's the end of the day, you're tired, just want to get to bed, to have somebody else there literally every single night who has different agendas and time schedules just sucks. And speaking of sucking, there is no shortage of booty calls from down the hall when the call of the wild comes. We joke about just leaving some money on the nightstand. It's great. Not me. But my grandparents. My grandfather snored like a freight train. And my grandmother had untreated lactose intolerance. She couldn't sleep due to the noise. He couldn't sleep due to the smell. Kids. Kids who come to our bed. S. T. Night if they don't start out there. Who then migrate around like a drunk octopus. Wake regularly. And are generally painful. With both in the same room they wake each other and it's 10x worse. If we have one each we get to sleep. Ish. This. Too. Shall pass. I wake at the slightest mouse fart and cannot go back to sleep. She sleeps like the dead and insists on leaving her phone notifications on full volume. There are other reasons. But that alone was enough for me. This is a conversation we seem to have with every single guest who comes over for the first time lol. Won't you guys sleep in separate bedrooms? Y'all just got married. It started out because we had different sleeping cycles and different desires temperatures add to that I have chronic back issues so I need to lie in weird positions but the biggest reason now? My wife and I take each other out on dates. And once in a while we'll have sleepovers. It's silly because we're married. Live together. And see each other all the time but it gives us those first crush butterflies to sleepover. When it's not a daily thing. It's nice to feel infatuated with my wife once in a while in that kind of way. Sounds weird but it works for us lol. My parents have for the past approximately 5-ish years. The original excuse was that my dad has restless legs and would move around in bed a lot. And then it was that he went to sleep too late. Then it was that he would talk in his sleep. And by now everybody knows it's just. Cause they hate each other but won't divorce because Jesus and they've pretty much given up making excuses. Edit for spelling. My grandparents slept in different rooms for 10 plus years. My grandmother would snore so loudly it would keep my grandfather up all night. So they had to go in different rooms. When we would visit them and spend the night. Would always see them get up and meet in the kitchen for a hug kiss. Then go on with their morning. Sleep is important. Sleeping isn't sexual or intimate. It's a mandatory part of life that greatly affects your following day's quality. Get a good sleep alone. Wake up in a good mood. Spend a good day with your significant other. Thank you for asking. My friends just dismiss it as. That's just sad. Dude. Like I don't love my so because I'm not beside her while I'm lying there motionless for 8 hours. I have Crohn's disease and constant pain that jolts me up many times during the night. Sometimes it's just easier to crash on the couch so I don't disturb him by waking up 7 or 8 times during the night. He snores like a freight train and I am a light sleeper. We tried for 5 years. Then when I got pregnant I kicked him into the spare room because I was being woken up by puking at 4am every day and I wanted to be able to sleep during the night. It just kind of stuck and we are much happier not sleeping together. We were both starting to resent each other over the lost sleep. 